I trust that everyone had their Bible. We're going to talk about something that I think we take for granted, and that is the Word of God. Just this, this Word, uh, you know, people call it the Bible, but uh, the Word is quick, it's alive. It's a two-edged sword. It, it appears to divide in the sun of the soul and spirit and joints and the marrow. It will touch every spectrum of man's human existence. And so I want a, us to just look at the scriptures as we dive into not just the Bible, but God speaking to us. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. I don't look at this as just a religious book. I read it every day. I listen to tapes. I don't look at it as just a church. This is God. This is as close to God as you're going to get in this word. So I want to teach a message tonight called the authority of God's word. The authority of God's word. You know, religion just calls it the Bible, but this is the word of God. And there's no higher authority than God's word because God and his word are one. You can't separate God from his word. Amen. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. If the word was God, the word is God. And I want to use as a subtopic, there's a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. As I look back over my life, you know, we celebrated 40 years of ministry uh, Sunday. And I look at everything God has done since I got saved. You know, in 1975, the Lord changed my life. I came off of the streets. Many of you know my testimony, drugs, alcohol, pills. I was radically saved, and I immediately fell in love with Jesus and became radical in getting in this book. I was like the Saul of Tarshish when he was changed on the road of Damascus. He persecuted the church. He was more zealous than his fathers, but after he got born again, the Bible says the grace of God came on him, and he labored more than they all. And I became all that zeal. I took it and I gave it to the Lord and I got in this book. And I began to realize as I began to find out about faith, the word of God, one consistent thing that I realized that has brought me from that point to the day. And that is the power of confession, putting the word of God in my mouth. That was nothing that I received from God as I think back. You know, no buildings, no camera, no before there was anything, before there was a television ministry. Except it came through the power of confession. And I think sometimes we just take that for granted, especially during this pandemic. You have to make a demand on the word of God. You have to. That's why I'm, I'm using as a subtopic, there's a miracle in your mouth. I think back to everything that God has done, not just in ministry, but me and my family, my wife, and everything that we received from God, it was because of strong and powerful confession by the word of God. We put pressure on the word of God. And, and we needed to understand that this word was the final authority. And those two things, authority and confession of the word of God, those are the two things that God gave Adam in the beginning when God created man. He said, let us make man at the our image and let him have dominion. And the Amplified says, complete authority. And then he said, I'm going to give him seed, the word of God. I'm going to give you dominion and seed. And he told him to replenish the earth. In other words, you have the authority to create your own environment. So tonight, I, I want you to look with me carefully at some things and don't take them for granted. Let's dive into the word of God. Let's look at Matthew's gospel, chapter 7. And we're going to look at the last two verses and we're going to read from chapter 7 on down into chapter 8, verse 1 through there. Because when these, the Bible was written, it wasn't in chapter and verse. They were letters to the church. And so I don't want us to miss the meaning of what God did. We're talking about the authority of God's word. And there's a miracle in your mouth. Chapter 7, verse 28 says, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings. Now, he had been preaching and teaching. They were as astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority not as the scribes. In other words, when he spoke and taught the word of God, the authority of God's word, it stood out. When you have true authority, you don't have to announce it. You know, I didn't come in here tonight and tell these guys that are, you know, doing this on the cameras, I'm the pastor, I have authority. It's something about authority. When you're walking in true authority in God's word, you don't have to announce it. 
Jesus, when he was on this earth, he would just walk and he put pressure on the word of God. He came to do the will of his father and demons would crowd and say, we know who you are. By what authority you do these things? Why have you come to torment us before the time? When you're walking in true authority in God's word, people are going to know. The Bible says here, it says that he taught them and he was one with one with having authority. So the authority was in what he was saying when he taught the word of God and not as the scribes. In other words, that word didn't have any authority. We know why it was just basically they was into the, the traditions of men. And the Bible said the traditions of men will make the word of God a none effect. So when they would speak, there was, there was no confidence. There was no boldness there. That's what authority gives you is confidence and boldness. But Jesus' ministry was different. And the Bible says in chapter 8, verse 1, And when he came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And one thing I want you to understand about great multitudes that ain't just talking about maybe 100 or 200 people. It was anywhere from 30 to 40, 50,000 people. Jesus, that, that was authority going forth. That was an anointing going forth. And the Bible says, great multitudes followed him, and behold, there came him a leper. And worship him, saying, Lord, if thou will, canst thou make me clean. Now, notice he didn't know the will of God. He said, I know you, you can, but will you? And until you know the will of God, faith cannot, you cannot, faith, there's a question mark behind your faith. You got a question, is it God's will for me to be healed? Is God's will for me to be blessed? So Jesus removes the question mark. Notice how he responds. He says, and he put forth his hand and touched him. Now notice he established God's will. He said, I will be thou clean. He spoke the word. Now remember, he's, he's, his word is with authority. They just said that. And he spoke the word and said, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed. So we can see the word of God has authority over sickness and disease. The word of God has authority over that leprosy. He's walking in authority. He's speaking the word of God. Amen. And, and now I want to throw this in from the very beginning that the, in order for that word to have authority in your life, you must honor it and the one speaking it. You know, there in his hometown, he can do no mighty works. The Bible talks about because of their unbelief. But he touched them and he spoke. And because that leprosy honored him, he said, I just want to know. I know you can, but will you? And once the will of God was known, the power of God hit his body and leprosy departed. That means his flesh was restored whole. That spirit left, left him. What's doing this? It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Hallelujah. It's the healing power that's in the word. And we keep going, and he said to him, See that you tell no man, but go thy way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gifts unto Moses that he commanded for testimony unto them. Now, when he entered into Capernaum, and that shows you because there in his hometown, he was speaking the word of God. The word of God had authority, but he had totally different results that he had when he went down to Capernaum. The Bible says they came unto him a centurion beseeching him. Now, this is a Roman centurion. He's got, first of all, he's under Caesar's authority. He don't even have the covenant. He's not an Israeli. He's not a Jew. He's a Roman. And yet, he understood something. And what he understood, we're going to find out, is the key to walking and, 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 and receiving the authority of God's word. Here, he said this Roman centurion, he was under Caesar's authority. He had a hundred men under him. The Bible says he beseeched him saying, Lord, my servant lied at home sick with palsy, grievously tormented. And sometimes we just read that sick with palsy. We just think about a stomach ache. But I want you to see that this was a devastating sickness. If you go to the Amplified right here, it says that when it talks about Lord, he said, my servant was sick. He says, the Lord said, my servant boy is lying at, at home paralyzed. So he's not just sick. And, and the Bible says distressed with intense pain. So he's paralyzed. He's, 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 he can't move and there's intense pain in his body. Now let's go back to the 
uh, King James, because I think sometimes we just take these stories for granted. You know, he was home with the palsy. He had a stomach ache. No, he was paralyzed with intense pain. Amen. And the Bible says here, the Lord said, my servant, he lied at the home, sick of palsy, grievously tormented. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word of God only. Now catch this, because if you don't get the reason why he's saying this, you're going to miss the whole message. Speak the word of God only, and my servant shall be healed for. Now the message starts. For. How you know? For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. I say to this man, go. And he go. Get that bucket. I say to another man, come, bring me water. And he comes. And I say to, watch this, I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. And the Bible says here, when Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to them that followed him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found such great faith, no, not in all of Israel and all the church. Jesus called that the greatest faith, faith in the word and its authority alone. Most people, they want a sign. They want to feel something. And there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, that's the power of agreement. It's called the point of contact. Or Roberts made it famous, you know, that when I, you touch the hem of his God, believe you receive, release your faith. Or when you touch the prayer cloth, release your faith. But that's not the highest form of faith. Jesus said the greatest faith was faith in the word of God in its authority alone. Whether you got the prayer cloth, whether you can feel anything or see anything. He said, only speak the word and my service shall be healed. Why? For I'm a man under authority. In other words, what he's saying is your word carries the authority. I understand authority. This is what the whole message is about. We're talking about the authority of God's word. I say to this man, go. And he go. I want you say now, the reason I read about that leper, you spoke to that leprosy and it departed. I understand what authority is. Hallelujah, praise God. You, I saw you one day while your evangelistic team was going across a lake. A storm came up and you spoke to the wind and wave and it obeyed you. It obeyed your urge. I watched you one day going, going to a funeral. The funeral uh, uh, and it was a, a widow whose, whose, whose son had died and you stopped. Laid your hand on the kind of smoke to death and death had to obey you. In other words, the authority is in your word. Your word carries authority all by itself. It has the power in it to fulfill itself. And your word can do the same thing you can do in the flesh. That's what he was saying. He said, well, I'll come in here. He said, no, 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 no. That's just like you watching me at home right now. And you said, Pastor, uh, my daughter, you call me uh, uh, Annie or whoever, your, whatever your daughter is sick. Will you come and, and, and you said, uh, will, you, will, 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 will you come and, and he, you know, will you pray for them? And I, and I said, I'll come over there. I'll stop by tomorrow. And you said, no, Pastor, I know you're busy. Only speak the word. You don't have to come out. Just pray. Cross the phone. And your word can do the same thing you can do in the flesh. And my servant shall be healed. Jesus called that the highest form of faith. Let me tell you why that's the highest form of faith. There's going to come a day, it's just you, God, and the devil. You're not going to be able to get a prayer call. You're not going to be able to get holy oil. You're not going to be able to even have someone else there. You've got to understand the highest form of faith is Jesus called it. He said, I've been looking for this faith. It's faith in the word and it's authority alone. The word of God has authority over sickness. The word of God has authority over debt. The word of God has authority over poverty. The word of God has authority over lack. The word of, only speak the word he recognized because he understood authority. And this is what Jesus has been trying to get the church to understand. I don't have to come and lay hands on you. I don't have to come in the flesh and do nothing. I, I, I left my word with you, which carries authority in the earth. And when you understand that the word of God 
carries ultimate authority. He said, just speak it. Just speak your word. And my servant shall be healed. He said, this is the type of faith I've been looking for in the church. But no, Christians want a sign. Lord, if, if I'm going to get the job, have, have, give me a sign. And that's why Jesus always rebuked the scribes and Pharisees. They wanted a sign. They wouldn't believe, just believe the word of God. That's the highest form of faith. Now, don't get me wrong. If you don't, you can't get there. God will meet you where you're at. You understand what I'm saying? Thomas said, except I can touch and put my finger in that hole and feel it, thrust it, I won't bleed. So God came and said, okay, reach out of your hand. I'll meet you where you're at. He said, oh, my God, behold, it's the Lord. He said, Thomas, because you've seen and felt something, you bleed. But greater faith or more blessed are they that have believed and not seen or felt anything. In other words, faith in the word of God and its authority alone. That's what God is trying to bring to church, to where you can take what God said, put it in your heart. Now, see, we don't have to wait on God to speak it. He's already spoken it. This is the spoken word of God. The word is Jesus made flesh. And so what he's saying is, I'm looking for somebody who can go to the word of God concerning their healing. By his stripes, you were healed. And say, Lord, I believe that I receive that as final authority and sickness, disease, lack, poverty, whatever the case may be, is have to submit itself to the word of God. That's what he said. I say to my servant, what he said is sickness, disease is a servant to you. Leprosy is a servant to you. Coronavirus is a servant to you. And when I, when I see the word of God, that's final authority in my life. Now, let's look at the end results because I got a lot to say tonight. I want you to get the principle. Verse 13 says, okay. You know, he said, all right, that's the greatest faith. And Jesus said to the centurion, okay, go your way. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm not going to sit on prayer cloth. I'm not going to no know anointing oil. As thou hast believed. Believe what? The word of God. The word of God. Go to this word and believe it. My needs are met according to his riches and glory. That's the greatest faith. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. I ain't worried about what the devil is doing. Hallelujah. No evil shall befall me. No plague or accidents will come not where I dwell. The greatest faith is going to the word of God. Fill your heart with it until it get abundance and believe it. And understand that's the authority. That's what's going to have final authority in my life. And notice what happened here. He said, go thy way. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed the self same hour. He never touched them. He never put a prayer. And ain't nothing wrong with laying of hands. Ain't nothing wrong with prayer calls. Ain't nothing wrong with a point of contact. Ain't nothing wrong with the prayer of agreement. But the greatest faith, Jesus said, is understanding the authority of the spoken word and its authority alone. The word can do the same thing Jesus can do in the flesh. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them and saved them from destruction. Now, this is something I want you to see in this. I call this my kitty scripture. I want y'all to bring it up. Uh, St. John's Gospel, chapter 1. And I, I was just meditating on this. Why, why, why is the word, why is the word, why do it carry, carry authority? Why is it the greatest authority? What is it that the centurion understood that God, Jesus is trying to get us to understand? Well, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning, what, before there was Car, home, money, sickness, disease, problem. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. Well, God has authority. If the word was God, the word is God. So when I look at this word, God and his word is one. God has ultimate authority. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So you got to first of all understand God and his word is one. I keep going. He says, and the same was in the beginning with God. Here it is. And all things was made by him. Him who? The word. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. All things were made by the word. Everything you can see, feel. The Bible says, and without him, him who the word was not anything made that was made. In other words, the word was before sickness. The word was before disease. The word was before any. The word formed and created everything. And if the word formed and created everything, it will still respond to the word of God. 
That was in the beginning. God and his word is one. And so when I release the word of God, that's just like God himself, praise God. If you want to create something, if you want something to move, if you want a mountain to go, go to the word of God. Because in the beginning, start with the word, stay with the word, and then end with the word. By his stripes, you will heal. Okay, glory be, that's fine on the thought. I don't care what type of pain, sickness, disease hit my body. My knees are met according to his riches and glory. I don't care what my bank account look like. I'm starting with the word. God is authority, the authority. Only speak your word, okay? So I'm going to speak it. I'm going to confess because Jesus is the apostle and our priest of my confess. We don't have to wait on God to speak his word. He's given us the word of God to speak. Our voice carries authority in the earth and in heaven. And he said, that's the greatest faith. And, and that's why I said, there's a miracle in your mouth in the beginning. So God said, let the earth bring forth creepy things. God said, let the earth bring forth the firmament. God said, let the earth bring forth animals. God said, he started creating with the word. Before anything was made, that was the word. So the word is ultimately authority. And what we've done, we kind of separated the word of God from God. So when we pick up the Bible, we ask, we are like, God is up there. Now, God is right here. The word was God and the word is God. So the word is final authority. When we understand that, then I'm going to tell you something. Your faith is going to go to another level. So the first thing I want you to understand is you must make God's word final authority in your life. You must make God's word final authority in your life. And that's why I went back over my life and I thought about how we received them car, house, home, different levels of prosperity, healing in our body, how the church grew. It was always the word. That's why we named the church word of life. God says, my words are spirit and they are life. And if you're going to start anything, a church, and it's going to be successful, a marriage, a home, a choir, you're going to have to build it on the word of God. Let the word of God has final authority. So when we go to the word and it established the word is forever settled in heaven and I settle my healing, I settle my children's salvation, I settle my debt cancel. It don't matter what's going on in the earth, I make the word final authority. I will lend to many and not borrow from any. The day will come that I will owe no man nothing but the loving wine. The word of God is there. That's final authority. And Jesus said that's what he's looking for. Someone who said, I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what's going on in the earth. I don't care what anyone else is doing, praise God. If you make the word final authority, start with the word and stay with the word, you're going to get the word of God results. And I look back over my life, I know it sounds so simple, but everything that we've received, ministry, the Bible says the word is able to build you up and give you your inheritance. It was because I made the word of God, I had scripture for it. Scripture for my marriage, scripture for the church, scripture, always. Matter of fact, someone say, well, pastor, what about this and that? My response was the word of God says this. The word of God says it's final authority. To make God's word final authority, that means that you give it weight. You know, the newspaper saying this and this, and the folks on television saying that, and Fox News said this, and the Republican, Democrat. No, it don't matter what. God's word is final authority. It's going to come out like the word of God. So I've learned to extend God's word it, above every situation is final authority. Now, I want to show you something because I, I think when Jesus was preaching, he gave a great example of this. Let I me mean, make the word final authority. I mean, you know, a lot of people got voices. You got the newspaper. You got magazines. You got TV. You got people tweeting. You got people, you know, uh, all types of voices, Facebook, all types. No, 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 no. I don't care about it. At the end of the day. That's what Jesus said. I'm looking for somebody who will have the highest or the greatest type of faith. And that's faith in the word and that's authority alone. He said, oh, my God, I've been looking for this. We well, ain't got to look no further. I'm one of those guys. And this is how we, me, my wife, people that have followed have received everything that we received from God. It was by making the word of God final authority. Now, you're going to have to fight for it. You're going to have to honor it. Remember, if you don't honor the word, then that, the anointing won't flow to you. There in Jesus' own time, they didn't honor what he preached. Even though he taught with authority, they didn't honor it. Therefore, they didn't receive anything. Why? The word was a tradition to them. They put their tradition. We believe it this way, and the word had no effect. Look at Luke 4, verse 20 through 20, 
one. And this is when Jesus stood up in uh, his hometown of Nazareth and said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm the anointed one. Poor man, you ain't got to be poor anymore. Blind man, you ain't got to be blind anymore. Broken hearted, I'm here to heal your heart. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The year that the free favors of God shall profusely abound. To cancel every, everyone's death. I'm here. He preached. Now remember, he taught with authority. And the Bible says this is the end result of that. When he got through, <laughs> that's why I mean final authority. Because this is what I do all the time. He rolled up the book. What does that mean? He closed the book. You know, once I go to the word of God that says no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And read it. Believe it. Make it final authority. I'm closing the book. I ain't, ain't no more conversation. I've established what God said about my children. Great shall be the peace of my children. Isaiah 54, 13. He, yeah, but your son is on drugs. And they, no, 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 no. You, you go to the word of God. And we're talking about, we're talking about making God's word final authority. The authority of God's word. Yeah, but he on drugs. And he, I, the word of God says, great shall be the peace of my child. And righteous he shall be established. And when I speak it, read it. Guess what? I closed the book. He closed the book. He gave it back to the attendant. And I like this. He sat down. In other words, I'm in the rest. I went to the word of God concerning my finances. I'm a tither. My needs are met according to the riches and glory. I established, praise God, what God is going to do in my life. I'm going to close the book and sit down. I mean, ain't no use to tell. Now, if you want to, all we left to do is praise God because the word is final authority. I'm entering in the rest. And, and to show that he was in the rest, the Bible says all eyes was fastened on him in the synagogue. That tender looking at him like, who he think he is? Now, anytime you make God's word final authority, you're going to have some opposition. But notice the response. Then he began to speak to them and said, today, good God Almighty. Just like right now, you at home. The word of God says, by his stripes, you were healed. You ain't got to get Jesus to come and do nothing. You already healed. Because today, this scripture has been fulfilled while you were present and heard it. That's final authority. In other words, I didn't say what I got to say. I didn't close the book. And y'all don't get mad. You can get healed. You can do whatever. But you ain't going to change me or God. That's making God's word final authority. This scripture has been fulfilled. In other words, as far as God was concerned, healing already belonged to you. Deliverance already been. Now, if you can act on it, poor man, you don't have to be poor to man. Poor anymore. Broken hearted, you don't have to be broken hearted anymore. Sit down. I ain't going to argue with nobody. And the Bible, you know the story. The Bible says they, they didn't receive him and they kind of thrust him out of the city. And the reason I'm bringing up all of this is because he goes right down to Capernaum and preach it. And they believe what he preached and miracles was happening left and right. That's why I said there's got to be a certain amount of honor for the word of God. I'm going to go a step further. There's got to be honor for the one preaching the word of God. You can't be talking about I love his message, but what about the messenger? I have a problem with Pastor Diz. Well, you're going to have a problem with my message. Because if I'm preaching to you the word, there's got to be honor there. And he said, I'm sitting down. He said, today this scripture has been fulfilled. In other words, anybody that believes what I preach can go free right now. You're already healed. I'm the anointed one. I'm here, praise God. I'm the one that the old time they prophesied about. I'm the one with the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. And as far as I'm concerned, poor man, you, 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 your deaths are canceled today. Blind, open up your eyes, be healed. Now that's making the word final authority. And what, you know what, what upset him? Today. Today. Because today puts pressure on you. Because faith is now. If he said, now one of these days, there's coming an anointed one. And when he's come, oh, poor man, you're going to be blessed. And one of these days, when you get over yonder, oh, they would have shouted, hallelujah, preach. But when he said, today, it puts pressure on you. You're healed now. You're delivered now. Now faith is. Either you believe it or you don't. And Jesus said, the greatest faith is faith in the word and its authority alone. And I done got the word now. Over the years, I just preach it. When I close the book, even that I'm preaching someone at home right now, you already healed. 
Hallelujah. If you believe I'm anointed and you believe the word of God, hallelujah, put it in your mouth. Declare that it's done. Today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your ear. Matter of fact, I'll tell y'all something right now. Healing is not just a promise. Healing is a fact. In the Old Testament, it was a promise. Isaiah 53 says, surely he is born our griefs, carried our sorrows, he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes we are here. Well, they was prophesying about the Messiah. He wasn't here yet. But in Matthew 8, 17, it says that he healed all that they, that they were sick. He healed them all that it might be fulfilled, spoken by that Isaiah, saying himself took our infirmity. And boy, I was sick. So healing is a fact now. And this day, but so many Christians, this is where religion, religion says not today. Maybe one of these days you'll get your healing. I can tell people when they really in faith. You know, one of these days God going to cancel my death. One, no, now faith is. One of these days God going to save my, my children. They cut, no, now faith is. So that's what put pressure. Jesus is saying these scriptures has already fulfilled themselves, and I'm here, praise God, and all you got to do is act on it. And that centurion, he acted on it, and he said, man, just like you done believe. And the same day, not two weeks later, the Bible says the self-same hour, his servant was healed. Jesus said, I'm looking for someone with that type of faith. And then if you look at Luke 1, verse 37, hmm. For with God, with the word, God and his word are one. That's where we're going to have to bring God and his word together. When I read the Bible, that's like God talking to me. That ain't the book. That ain't the Bible story. That's God. All scripture was given. God breathed by us. That's God. For with God, the word of God, nothing is ever impossible. No word from God is void of the power of or impossible of fulfillment. That's what Jesus said. This scripture has been fulfilled. The power is already in the word. The centurion said, I understand the authority, praise God. Because I say to one, go, and he go, oh, I get this. And I say to another man, come. Man, there's powers in that word. The power of God. All I got to do, you don't have to just speak your word. The power is in the word. The Bible says when he believed it, that it was already fulfilled. Then that power was released into us, and that power will go into your finances. It'll go into your body. It'll come into your church. It'll change your finances. No word from God is void of the power it takes to fulfill itself. And yet, religion, well, you never know what God going to do. I always know what God going to do. <gasps> yeah, he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. No word from God. So that's why I said only speak the word. My servant shall be healed. Glory be to God. Because I understand the word is final authority. I don't care. I know the doctor said this. I know the doctor said I'll give you another good example. The woman with the issue of blood in Mark 5. When she heard of Jesus. What did the doctors tell her for 12 years? He couldn't be healed. Took all the money. She got worse. She was excommunicated from her family. Because it was an infectious disease, contagious, lost everything, lost her joy, lost her peace, lost her relationship. But when she heard of Jesus, and you need to read the Amplified. It didn't say for she said within herself. It says she kept saying there was a miracle in her mouth. It's not what people say about you. It's what you say about yourself. The doctor said, oh, there's nothing we can do for 12 years. But she said within herself. If I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And then she acted on that word. She believed that word. And when she touched the hem of his garment, dunamis, power, no word from God is void of the power it takes to fulfill itself. But religion just said, this is just a book. So over the years, when it came to building buildings, when it came to believing for a better life, and not just me, when it came for be, being a blessing to other people, I stopped believing the word of God, that anything God said, I made it final authority. Concerning my finances, concerning my children. Hallelujah. And I've watched God be faithful every day from that day until this day. He's never failed. Hallelujah. And so God is trying to get us to come to that place to understand this is not just a religious book. Look at Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. 
Most people take the word of God for granted. They think that, oh, well, you know, you know, you know, some get it, some don't. Well, I'm going to be the one to get it because I'm going to believe what he said. I get mine every time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No word from God is void of the power it takes to fulfill itself. Now, you know who he was talking to when he said that. He was talking to, she was, the angel, God was talking to Mary. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. And the word became flesh. That's all God wants you to do, receive it. I'm sure not to my hind, the way whoever can, uh, I get pregnant without a man. The Holy Ghost and the seed shall be the word of God. So don't try to figure it out. Just stand on the word of God. Man, that's what faith is, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I remember, man, when I first got in this book and God began to show me the world, how it seemed impossible. But then I began to say, yeah, with men, it is impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. No word from God is void of the power it takes to fulfill itself. So let's look here then at Luke 4. So we're talking about the authority of God's word. You say, well, what, what about this miracle in your mouth? Just stay with me. Luke 4, verse 31, 32. And you can tell people, Paul said, my preaching and my teaching was not with enticing words of man wisdom. When you're preaching and talking, they don't mean, it ain't got nothing to do with how loud you are, how, how rambunctious you are. Authority, you can be quiet. The devil recognizes authority and people recognize authority and sickness and disease and lack will recognize authority when it comes on the scene. We're talking about the authority of, of the word of God. In Luke 4, verse 31 and 32. Mm. The Bible says here, he came down to Capernaum. Now, that's why you say, well, why? why? Because I'm trying to show you the attitude about the word. There in his own town, how can, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Is not this Joseph boy? It's not, I say, I don't care how much authority you have. I don't care what you speak. If you have the wrong attitude, not only about the word, but the one bringing the word of God, when he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, he taught them, he spoke the word, and on, uh, he, spoke, he taught them on the Sabbath days, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. The power was coming out of the word. Only speak the word and my servant shall be healed. You drop down to verse 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying, what word is this? Good God Almighty. For what authority and power he come with authority and power, he commanded unclean spirits to come out. Devils were subject to the word of God. Sickness and disease were subject to the word of God. Cancer was subject to the word of God. Leprosy was subject to the word of God. Deaf ears were subject to the word of God. Blind eyes. What's happening? The word is final authority. And the Bible says, what word is this? It was the powers in his word. Now you say, well, why don't I have that type of power? Because you don't spend no time in this word. That's why Mark said, all you do is watch a bunch of TV and a lot of us has got lazy during this pandemic and we're not studying and we're not diligent in the word of God, making deposits in our spirit. Notice you got to speak out of the abundance of your heart. We ain't just talking about speaking from your mind. Faith is a product of the heart. With the heart, man, believe it. Not with the mind. Faith is a product of your spirit. And, and, and a lot of us have gotten lazy and that's why, you know, we've got to... Amen. Get our hunger back. We got to get thirsty. We got to put time in the word of God. Amen. Give us this day, Lord, our daily bread. And a lot of us have gotten lazy, but Jesus said, take heed what you're hearing. For whatever you hear, he was in Mark 4, he said, it's going to be measured back to you. And he said, the amount of thought and study you give to the word of God would be the amount of power and virtue come back to you. That's why some preachers can get up and preach something and it's like, oh my God, it's like revelation. You know, Paul said it was stirring the most holy emotions in his listeners because it was empowering demonstration of the spirit. And then there's other people get up and don't get nothing because it's coming out of their mind. So here, Jesus, the Bible says his word is with power and authority. So you must know, you must know, 
Mm-hmm. Your God-given authority to speak his word with authority. See, <laughs> you can't be trying to act like you got authority. <laughs> there were seven sons of Sceva who, who, who said, you know, boy, that looked good what Paul doing. Man, I'm a, they took upon themselves a demon-possessed guy and, and, and said, we're going to, we had Jew you in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preached to come out. And them devils said, them. remember we talked about when you really walk in authority, the devil's going to know you. Jesus we know, Paul we know, but who are you? And you know the story, they fled wounded and naked. They were overcome. Because in order to speak with authority, you got to know the authority before you speak. You got to know your God-given authority to speak his word with authority. And that don't mean you got to be shouting, man. There's been times over my life I remember one particular wedding I was at. And, you know, I was leaving the wedding. And a girl fell down with the epileptic seizure. Her eyes went back in the head. She started biting her tongue, and everybody was falling all over. And, oh, Lord, have mercy. She's dying, this, that, and whatever. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, I want you to turn around and go lay hands on her and cast that spirit out of her. I just came back and obeyed God and just went right in the middle of the crowd and said, in the name of Jesus. And everybody just back up. Come out, loose and let her go. Eyes went back right, her tongue straightened up. I mean, we didn't have time. The devil was trying to kill her before the emergency truck got there. And she got up and said, oh, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. I can tell you situation after situation about that. But, but what gave me the, the boldness to speak the word because I knew my God-given authority. And that's what Jesus, praise God, had such powerful results. Another situation, some of you know, you know, the, 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 the sidewalk to nowhere, you, it's been documented. When they wanted us to spend nearly a quarter million dollars on the sidewalk, uh, that wasn't going to nowhere. And you know the story, we went weeks and weeks and television and all of that, and finally we had a big meeting up at City Hall with the mayor and all the city council and everybody else, and they was getting ready to, to, to pass it and, 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 and said that, well, y'all going to have to build a sidewalk, and before that, I said, wait a minute, before you vote on this thing, let me just say this, I just stood up with my God-given authority. Amen, I knew I had authority. I begin to tell them, look, God can build a sidewalk of gold, but I want you to know that if you try to force us to build this sidewalk, I'm talking about take God, good God fearing people, ties and, and widows and make them build this. He said, if you bless us, he'll bless you. But if you curse us and don't do it, then you're going to bring a curse on this city. This city will never come out of that. And in the name of Jesus, I just want you to know, praise God, if you want to be blessed, then you need to bless us, treat us right. And I sat down, and it changed that whole meeting. Some of you was in it. What's going on? God-given authority. Making the word of God final authority. It's greater than politics. It's greater than politicians. We've, we've seen that in the name of Jesus. And don't y'all get me going with politics. Because I'm going to preach something on New Year's night. <laughs> Boy, y'all pray for me, but I, I want to preach it right now. God know how to deal with Nebuchadnezzar's. Word of God is final authority. And in order to, to you must know your God-given authority to speak God's word with authority. I want you to look at this in Acts chapter 3, verse 4 and 8 through 8. Jesus had told them, go in all the world and preach the gospel and he went with them confirming the word. Make the word final authority. And Peter directed his gaze intently at the man. He's going into the beautiful gate. Man been there lame from his mother's womb. So that John said, look on us. They said, look on us. And the man paid attention to them, expecting that he was going to get something from them. Peter said, and don't, don't go off, silver and gold, money, I, do die. I don't have it right now. He just got, became a millionaire. He sold all those fish. It was back at home. He was walking with Jesus. He just said, I don't have it now. Matter of fact, you don't need money. But watch, this one what you see. I do not have, but what I do have. You can't give somebody something you don't know you got. What I do have, I give to you in the use of the name of Jesus Christ. And not rise up and walk. And there was a situation there where he could have just said, oh, because notice the next verse says he took hold of the man's right hand 
with a firm grip and raised him up. And all at once his feet and ankle bones were received was strong and steady. They received strength. And the Bible says he went through the temple, right? Praising God. What I want you to see, such as I have, give I thee. If you don't know what you have, how are you going to give it to me? And so when you got the word of God, you got to know, praise God, I got authority over devils. I got authority over sickness and disease. I got authority over fear. I have authority over this situation. God given authority. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy to trample and, and tread upon scorpions and nothing by any means shall hurt or harm you. You can't speak authority if you don't know you. How you going to give me something you don't know you got? You got a million dollars in the bank and I ask you to help me out and you say, well, I can't. Well, you can't give me something you don't know. If you're not healed, you can't give healing to me. So it's very important that we get a mentality of what is God-given authority. You must know, you must know your God-given authority to speak his word with authority. I like this other scripture over here in Ecclesiastes 8 verse 4 because the Bible says he's made us kings and priests. We're talking about the authority of the word. Because there's a lot of people got the word, but they don't know they got God-given authority. You got to have know the authority you've been given to speak that word. See, the centurion said, I understand authority. We're right back to that. Because I'm a man, I'm under Caesar. And man, when Caesar says something, everybody move. And I got men, when I say they move. So I understand God giving authority. So it's because I understand authority. Jesus, speak your word and my servant shall be healed. He said, for the, the word, for the word of a king is authority and power. And who can say to him, what do you think you're doing? And that's what they question Jesus. But why, what authority you do that? Who are you? Well, that's what, who you think you are going up there to city hall talking about yeah, we ain't going to build no side. Who you think that when you, are, when you know who you are and you operate in God-given authority as a king and priest under God, men and women will come against you. But, hey, you got to know who you are. Jesus didn't back up. That's why he would preach. He closed the book, sat down. The Bible says all, they got hot. They were mad at him, tried to throw him off the mountain. He said, hey, man, I know who I am. I'm preaching the word of God. I am the anointed one. And so it's very important, praise God, that you know your God-given authority in order to speak the word with authority. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Devil's going to know. Nobody else knows. Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? Devils know those that's walking in God-given authority. They don't even have to say nothing. Hallelujah, praise God. So we're going to look at Romans you say, well, what, what, what is this about a miracle in your mind? Well, keep going. Notice he said, speak the word, and my servant shall be healed. Look at Romans chapter 10. There are a lot of people that's trying to get Jesus to come to their house tonight. Oh, Jesus, stop by here. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, come heal my fever brow. Oh, Jesus, come touch me. Oh, Jesus, come touch my son. They're trying to get Jesus to do what he's already done. By his stripes, you were healed. Jesus, bless me. You are already blessed with spiritual blessings and heaven face all blessings. So there are a lot of people who don't know their authority trying to get Jesus to do what he's already done. So here in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, the centurion said, no, Jesus, you ain't got to come to my house. You don't have to physically show up. Speak your word can do what you can do in the flesh. And verse 6 says this, but the righteousness which is of faith, speak it on this wide. This is so very important. Look at this phrase. Say not in thine heart. Because when we speak the word of God, we're not speaking out of our mind. We're speaking out of our spirit. When the word of God get in my heart in abundance, over the years, when we spoke, and me and my wife spoke the word of God, and we needed, praise God, income. We needed buildings. We needed, praise God, millions of dollars to, in order for the ministry to fulfill the call of God. We needed the, the money for the cameras. We needed the money for the people. God, God told me, stress my faith when we went in the church as far as it would go. 
But, but in order to speak those words to have power, they had to be coming out of my heart. That's why a lot of people speak it out of their mind. He says, say not in thine heart. You'll see it. Who shall ascend into the heaven? That is to bring down Christ from Jesus, come down and touch me. Hold it right there. Lord, send the power. Lord, I want you to come touch my fever brow. Lord, I need you to come touch my finance. Lord, touch Uncle Fred. He said, no, the righteous, and we are the righteous God. Say, it don't try to get Jesus to come do what he's already done. Keep going. Nor does it say, descend into the deep. And that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Lord, come on, rise up and move. It ain't trying to get Jesus to come down. Or is it trying to get Jesus to come up? Keep going. But what said it? What said it? The righteous which is of of faith that speaks in your heart. He says, the word is near you. Even in the mouth and in the heart. It's the word of faith which we preach in your heart and in your mouth. And I believe it says in your mouth and in your heart. And I believe right here the chicken came before the egg. Because in order for the word of God to get in your your heart, you got to start confessing it with your mouth. And that's why a lot of people speak in the word of God and they wonder, well, why don't they have authority? I rebuked the devil. I said this. I didn't get them because it wasn't in your heart in abundance. Take the thought, say it. Take the thought, say it. That's where you got to spend time meditating the word of God day and night. Praise God. Getting it in your heart. Thy word have I hid in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. My son, attending to my word. How much attention do you give to the word of God? Do you give it more than television, the newspaper? They did not depart from thine eyes. Keep it in the midst of thy heart. For it's like that those who find them in medicine to their flesh. So you got to get in the word of God. Get in the word of God. Speak the word of God. Speak the word. And over the, over the years, I had to go back and I said, Lord, I can see everything we received from God. There was a confession. There was a bold confession. And it wasn't just me saying it out of my mind. I took time. First got the word of God in me. Meditate the word of God. Speak in the word of God. This is where I'm getting the message. There's a miracle in your mouth. Because as I begin to speak the word of God, speak the word of God, what was I was saying start getting in my heart. What got in my ears got in my heart. Matter of fact, if you look at that word heart, there's an a E-A-R in between it. In between your heart, there's an ear. Faith coming by hearing, hearing, hearing. So I got takes. I got books. I begin to speak the word of God. I got CDs, DVDs. I got my heart full of the word of God. And he said, the word of faith, which we preach. So he said, don't try to get Jesus to come do it. He says, you don't have to be like the centurion only speak. You speak the word of God. Let Jesus rest. He's already defeated sickness and disease. He's already defeated the devil. He's already defeated life. He's already defeated cancer. He's already defeated leprosy, praise God. He came to the earth to this purpose was the Son of God manifest to destroy the works of the devil. He destroyed it all, came up and said, all power has been given unto me. And behold, now I give you that power, praise God. And he ascended to the right hand of the Father and sat down, meaning it's done. So don't try to get Jesus. Don't disturb Israel. He said, you speak to the devil. Whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on, there's a miracle in your mouth. You take the word of God and you speak it into existence. Call those non-existent things like they already exist. Call yourself healed. Call yourself out of debt. Call your children already saved in the name of Jesus. Take the time to put it in your mouth and put it in your heart until they get in there in abundance and out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak and when it speaks, that word has final authority over sickness, over disease, the same way it didn't have any authority over me when I was on the earth, Thank God it won't have no authority over you. Light won't have no authority. Coronavirus don't have no authority. The word of God has the authority. Final authority. And so there's a miracle in your mouth. Healing is in your mouth. Deliverance is in your mouth. Your children's salvation is in your mouth. Your debt cancellation is in your mouth. See, we got lazy tongues. And I began to think back over the years, I didn't receive nothing from God except there was a powerful, powerful confession and, and, and praying in the Holy Ghost behind it. That's what I, I'll, 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 I'll confess the word of God. Some of you remember, praise God, for we building in these buildings. 
We was over on Green Street confessing that we had money to pay for that bill. We paid that off early. We got the word. Amen. And we went, oh, no man, nothing but to love him. Hallelujah. We took the covenant of God. We made the word final authority. And so a lot of people today, they just want to, oh, well, you know, they don't want, they're lazy. And he's rewarded them that diligently seek him. And so we're going to have to get our diligence back. We're going to have to get our fire and hunger back. This pandemic has made a lot of people lazy. No fellowship time, no confession time, no word of God time. And so if you're not spending time with God, how are you going to get the word in your heart? If you're not, what is by not just speaking it, praise God, through meditation, through DVDs, through reading the word of God. And so here, you can see, praise God, where there's a miracle in your mouth. So Jesus and his manifested miracles are as close as God's word is in your mouth. Hallelujah. Jesus said, don't get me to do You rebuke the devil. You call that house paid for in the name of Jesus. A good man out of good deposit of his heart bring forth good things. How much time are you spending depositing the word of God in your heart? Or do you just sit back and watch television until you get in trouble and then you try to speak some words of faith and wonder why they don't carry authority? Because Jesus said that we've got to meditate in the word. The word of God says day and night. God told Joshua, meditate in the word day and night. Keep it in your mouth. That's why he said he was said there's a miracle in your mouth. Don't talk about the Jordan. Don't talk about Jericho. Don't talk about the giants. Speak the word. This book of all shall not depart out of your mouth. Meditate therein day and night. Mutter it over until your heart gets full of it. And what's happening, while a lot of people not getting results, they shout with no word. That's why God wouldn't let, Joshua wouldn't let anyone shout. Because nothing wouldn't have happened. They had to march around seven days meditating. Meditating, don't talk fear, don't talk unbelief, don't talk television, don't talk all the negative. Keep your mouth shut. Meditate day and night. Meditate that seven days. Meditate, get the image. See the walls coming down. Hallelujah, praise God. And then after seven days, the Bible says, he said, shout for the Lord. What's that? We've been shouting with nothing on the inside. That's why the debts is not going away. So your children not being saved. Empty spirits. Jesus said, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. So if we're going to see Jesus manifested miracles, they're close as God's word in our mouth. The word is not thee. You put it in your mouth, put it in. And I just began to go back over the years and I realized everything I've ever received from God, both ministry wise and personally, there was confession time. Confession time, confession time, agreement time, speaking the word of God, speaking the word of God. Then come out and encouraging y'all guys. Come on, let's agree. Some of you remember, amen, we made a little model of, of, of the church, the first church over on Green, over uh, that we built uh, in these three buildings. And we would, we, how much confession? We would always confess the word of God. That, look, with the heart, man, believe it, with the mouth, confession is made unto not just salvation, healing, deliverance, that cancellation. And so this is a pattern of God. It ain't going to never change. Heart, mouth, faith. It's got to both got to be connected with the word of God. Faith must always be in two places. It's got to be in your mouth, but it's got to be in your heart. You can't speak things that, that with your mouth that's not in your heart. That's what you call a deceived heart. That's what religion is. That's people saying things, but the word is not. There's no power there. So that word don't carry authority. Look at this scripture, Hebrews. Let's look at this. So this ain't nothing new. We need to go back and do the basis. We need to become established in the basis. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, confession. I want to deal with that, Christ Jesus. He's the apostle and high priest of our confession. Don't try to get Jesus. Don't say, Jesus, come down here and do it. He is, wait on you to speak the word of God. Only speak the word in my son. And I like the word profession. 
versus confession. And profession is part. If you profess to be saved, you confess to be saved. But profession brings out the, the, the thought of professional. And a professional football player just don't play football on Sunday afternoon throwing the ball to his son. He plays for a living. Even when it's all season, it's a profession. A professional is someone who does something all the time. You understand what I'm saying? And so what we've been trying to do, instead of making the word of God a lifestyle of speaking in it, so we just want to wait until we get in trouble and then make a little quick profession. We wonder why the word of God has not carried authority and weight in our lives. Well, you got to make it a profession. This is a lifestyle. How I'm preaching now is how I talk in my house. I live like this. I got books takes everywhere I go. They wait in the car, CD. I'm always, every day, M33 player, getting the word of God, something. It's a profession. It's a lifestyle. And when you bring a lifestyle to the pulpit, then that word is going, that people are going to say that word is with authority. Now, Keep going. The possum, a high priest of our profession, who was faithful. He's a faithful high priest. The them that appointed him, even as Moses, is faithful in all of his house. He's faithful over our confession of faith in this word, praise God. When we speak the word of God, he's a faithful high priest. Matter of fact, the Bible says, our God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. We say this so much, we miss it. By Christ Jesus. He's the apostle and high priest of our confession. He's the sit one. He's the administrator. When I speak the word of God, that's why that centurion said, only speak the word of God. How, and when he did, Jesus said, I don't have to come. This is my God. I've already said my word to do it. My word can do what the same thing that I can do in the flesh. And we're not literally bringing it. The word is not you, even in your heart and in your mouth. It's the word of faith which we preach. So it's got to become a lifestyle. It's got to become, I like that, a pro. I'm a, it's a lifestyle for me, praise God. Now, if you look here, we're going to close with Exodus chapter 4. No, 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 no. Let me, let me, let me make this statement. I have another statement. Speak God's, speak out of the abundance of your heart. That's very important. The deposit it where, how much time, and then you'll get results. I'm trying to show you why people, well, I spoke the word. It didn't, didn't have authority. It didn't, it didn't do, well, you're not, you're not spending time in it. I mean, the word got to be in your heart in abundance. I mean, I look at this glass, and it's not empty. It's not full. This glass is about three-fourths full. And if you keep one drop of water at a time, make it impossible. Say this glass is your spirit. There will come a day if I keep adding water. I don't have any. I'm going to add a bottle. I'll show you a drop. Drop. It'll get higher and higher and higher until it overflows. And so what we let this represent your spirit man. A lot of people's spirit man is empty. They don't study. They don't speak the word of God. They don't meditate. They don't confess the word of God. And so they just think that then they get in trouble and they speak empty words. They're coming out of their mouth, but they're not out of the abundance of the heart. So you got to make deposits. You got to spend time. You got to read the word of God. Listen to CDs over the, over the years. Oh, my God. Hours and hours and hours of meditation time. So that when I get up to speak and when I do speak word, that word is going to carry authority. It's going to carry weight. Luke 6, 45. You got a miracle in your mouth. But the mouth must be connected to your spirit. The upright, honorable, intrinsically good man out of the good treasure. That word treasure means de deposit. How much time are you spending in the word of God? How much meditation time? How, much, how many CDs? How many DVDs? How much time? How much meditation? How much prayer time? Stored in his heart. I like that. Produces. It's not really God making it happen. It's you. The, your spirit is the production center for your healing. Your spirit is a production. You're bringing it forth. Produces what is upright, honorable, and intrinsically good. An evil man out of, it works in the negative, but we ain't going that way. Out of the storehouse, bring forth that which is depraved, wicked, intrinsically evil. For out of the abundance of the overflow. How much, how, how full is your spirit of the word of God? Are you just speaking words? 
See, Jesus, when he spoke words, they was in abundance. He was called the living word. He's called the word made flesh. And he said, out of the overflow of your heart, your mouth speak. And so when you're full of the word of God, man, my God, I'm going to tell you something. That word is going to come out with authority and it's going to come out with power. People are going to recognize the authority and the power that's in the word of God. Now, with that said, we're going to um, close here with Exodus chapter 4. So it's got to be coming out of the abundance of your heart. There are people that don't spend any time in the word of God. And they, they, I, I've seen it. People preaching stuff and teaching, and it ain't coming out of their spirit. And they wonder why they're not getting results. Well, it's got, he said, out of the overflow. Overflow means you have put the word of God in there. And that, don't get me wrong. You got to put it in there. Deposit, deposit, deposit. One drop at a time. Go to Bible study. Get in the word of God. Read the word of God. Meditate the word of God. Give us this day. And over the years, that's what I was doing, man. I, I mean, I, I was radical with the word. And so as I begin to speak and pray and confess this miracle that was inside of me, it began to bring forth all the necessary tools of ministry. Those was not empty words. God told Samuel, I will not allow not one of your words to fall to the ground. Why? They're out of the abundance of your heart. So we, a lot of us are just lazy. Hallelujah. So we got to make those deposits. Let's look at Joshua. There's a miracle in your mouth. I brought forth everything in my life. Hallelujah. I brought it forth out of the abundance of my heart as me and my wife begin to speak the word of God and those begin to speak the word of God. Those were not empty words. That word carried authority and it carried weight. Joshua chapter 14. We'll close with that. From the Old Testament. I said Joshua, didn't I? <laughs> Exodus 4. <laughs> Exodus 4. And this is real simple. Look at verse 10. Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent in speech. See, a lot of times we look at our inadequacies. Uh, you know, Moses had a stutter in proper problem, and he, he said, Lord, I, I'm not elected in, in speech. Therefore, no, 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 no. You know, that, that thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but, but, but I am slow in speech, and I got a slow tongue. Notice God's response, and you need to read this correctly. The Lord said unto him, who has made man's mouth? He's talking about our inabilities, uh, our handicaps. He said, who make it a dumb? He ain't saying he make people dumb. He said, there's been dumb people. Or the deaf. I'm the one that caused the dumb to speak, the deaf to hear. That's what he's saying. Or seeing, or the blind. Have not I the Lord? And yet, he said, therefore you go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. I'll be with your mouth. I'm not asking you to perform the word, I'm asking you to speak. You go before Pharaoh. It ain't about you, who you are. It's who I am. Don't give me your inabilities. Don't give me your inadequacies. He says, I will be with your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. And when Moses, praise God, stood before Pharaoh and began to say, thus saith the Lord, let my people. That word had final authority. Even Pharaoh had to bow his knee. The Red Sea had to bow his knee. All enemies had to get out of the way. And I'll tell you something right now. God told Joshua the same thing. That's what God was trying to get Moses to do. He, was try he told him when he was telling him to, to speak to the rock, he was trying to get, bring in a new anointing. Because up in the day, Moses represent maintenance ministry. Up in the day, he would smoke the rock. And the Bible says that water would come out. And yet, that's because the people, they cried to Moses, he was a maintenance man, gave him water. They cried to Moses, he gave him manna. God says, no, we're not going to look to a man. The word is not you. I want you to speak to the rock. And that's why when he didn't speak to it, he didn't go in. He died in the promise. There's a transition. The word is not you. You speak the word. You, a miracle is in your mouth. 
And so he said, first thing he tells Joshua, this book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Out of thy mouth. Did you get it? Out of thy mouth. I'm going to be with your mouth. I'm going to be with your mouth. I don't want to hear about your inadequacies, your inadequacies, whether you didn't have a degree in this. It ain't who you are, it's who I am. There's a miracle in your mouth. And when Moses finally got it, everything he spoke, praise God, was anointed. That word had authority over death. He put the blood over the doorpost. It protected the people, praise God. And Joshua did the same thing. Only difference, only two of them, Joseph and Caleb, had another spirit. So, what am I saying? You don't have to perform the word. This is what God was telling Moses. I'm going to be with your mouth. There's a miracle in your mouth. You tell Pharaoh this, I'll anoint it. You speak that, I'll anoint it. You may be in fear, but it ain't about you. You may not have the money in the bank. You may not have a big house. He said, I'm going to be with your mouth, not your bank account. There's a miracle in your mouth. He says, you don't have to perform my word. Just speak it. It carries authority by itself. Only speak the word and my servant shall be healed. The word of God making it final thought. That's what this interior recognized. And we don't have to go back and get Jesus to do nothing. He said, the word is not there. And out of the abundance of my heart over the years, I've spoken to just all the things, being diligent with the word of God. God hasn't changed. The pattern is still the same. Look at Jeremiah 1 12 as we get ready to close here. He said, then said the Lord to me, you have seen well, for I am alert, active, watching over my word to perform it. I'm waiting on you. You ain't got to do it. You don't have to bring this. You don't have to cancel the debt. Just speak my word concerning debt cancellation. You don't have to go out and try to save your children. Just speak my word over your children. You don't have to go out and try to get the finances. Just speak my word concerning the finance. He said, I'm active. I'm waiting. I'm alert. I watch over my word to perform it. You do the speaking. There's a miracle in your mouth. God does the performance. Man, that takes all pressure off me, man. When I learned that and began to get, man, I just said, okay, God, I believe you. And so there was a new awareness that I began to have for the word of God, that this is final authority. I can see why the centurion said, only speak the word. Only speak the word. Only speak the word. This is a covenant. God cannot and will not break his covenant, praise God. And so it's not yo. You don't have to go out and try to save your children. Jesus said, they came to Jesus and said, how shall we do the work of God? He said, the work of God is for you to believe. <laughs> believe what God said and then speak what he said. And then enter into rest, praise God. So I want to encourage you that's been at home during this pandemic, start speaking the word of God, start spending meditation time in the word of God. Hallelujah. Understand that when you look at that Bible, it is final authority. It's going to come out like what God said. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. If you're going to start, start out on the word, stay with the word, and then end with the word. He's the alpha and the omega. He watches over his word to perform it. When it's your children, your finances, home, me and Joyce, we love you. These are just things that we've done over the years that we've put into motion, but we've been becoming lazy, praise God. The word is not thee. You don't have to get God. You want Jesus coming to your home? He's just as close as the word of God in your mouth. The word is not you, even in your home. You don't have to bring him down. You don't have to bring him up. He's as close. Your miracle is as close as the words of your mouth. So I want to encourage you, get out those CDs. Get out those things. Come on, get the dust off of them. Get back into the word of God. Get diligent in the things of God. And you'll begin to see, praise God. Understand that this word of God is final authority. And when you do, amen, it'll begin to change your life. You'll enter into a rest. 